Hi, welcome to episode of Life. My name's Adam Hamlin, I'm the editor of Pixel, and I'd like to thank Nauticam for sponsoring this episode. Nauticam have a range of housings, underwater optics, um, uh, including well, some very excellent underwater optics. Um, and um, please head on over to nauticam.com to check out what they're doing. Um, I'm really happy to be joined by my friend, Natalie Gibb from Tulum in Mexico. Hi, Natalie. Hello, thanks for having me. Um, Natalie is the owner of a dive shop in Tulum. I'm specializing in cave diving um, called Under the Jungle um, and is also the producer of some very, very beautiful imagery, um, still and video imagery um, of the caves in San Ortiz. Um, she's very kindly agreed to test out the new Sony A7S Mark III for us, um, which is, she's, she's lovingly stroking as we speak. <laughs> so, um, Natalie, how long have you had the camera and, and housing and, and stuff now? I have had the camera since approximately 4 p.m. on January 21st. <laughs> um, and I, I, I mean, I work full time, so I've had the opportunity to shoot it for about eight eight shots, uh, yeah, eight dives now, and uh, I'm in love. Oh, well, that's, that's always good news. So, um, I mean, simply put, what do you like about it, Natalie? What's, 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 uh, well, maybe, actually, no, I'm not going to give it to you. So, Natalie previously shot an A7S Mark One. so the, the, the two models preceding this. So, what do you love about the A7S III? What's, what's, what's better? Everything. And I don't mean this to talk poorly about my wonderful uh, A7S1, which is over on, on my shelf there, and I still love. Um, I would say that when I first held the A7S1 underwater um, and hit record, I went like, <gasps> like this camera understands light in the same way that I understand light. It sees the cave the way I see the cave, and I've never had that experience before. Like, I literally, the first time I had the A7S I I put it on auto, and it was, like, so much better than any other cave video I'd ever seen immediately. So the camera does this. It's a low-light video camera. So the A7S III, it's just like that but infinitely better in every aspect you can imagine. Um, so some of the things that I have found really, really helpful um, in my personal photography and videography, uh, the first thing I would say is just the insane sensor. Like, it's insane. Um, so it has, like, I guess it's debatable, but I read for, there's like, like, like 14 stops. Um, and so the dynamic range is crazy. It's just crazy. Uh, as far as a photo camera, obviously it's going to be uh, between um, the, the resolution and then the photo site size. But for me, because I am primarily a videographer, having the loads of photo sites in the higher dynamic ranges is, is absolutely everything. You see such details in the midtones and the shadows and even the highlights. And even for photos for me, for what I do, um, I think I'd rather have that, I would call it a detailed mood instead of detailed edges. I don't know, it's a mood, it's a feeling, and for me, photography and art and caves are feeling. So I'd rather be able to show you what I feel than have it be pixel perfect. So uh, I, I feel that this is an absolutely important trade-off that they've made which for me makes it the perfect low light video camera. Um, so so yeah. let's just backtrack a little bit. So so it's got a it's got a I think it's a twelve megapixel sensor. Is that right, Natalie? Yes. So so I mean yeah. I, I know a lot of people are going to be looking at it and going twelve megapixels. I mean my camera fifteen years ago had a twelve megapixel sensor. You know what's so special about that? But but what what I guess we need to emphasise is is that it's twelve megapixels still on a big full frame size sensor, so a 35 mil sensor. So it boils down to this idea of pixel density. So you've got basically bigger pixels, well, photo sites is another way of putting it, but it amounts to the same thing. And this is what really makes it such a unique camera for low light. 
um, you know, once those photocytes get bigger, they basically, um, so once they get smaller, they, they need more light to be active and bigger photocytes need less light. So that's why it's able to cope with much lower light levels. Um, I also love the idea of you saying, you know, this camera sees caves in the way that I do. Um, and, and I think that's a really important creative tool. When you say that, Onati, why do you, so, so you mentioned it, it gives you that slightly softer impression. What do you think, what do you think is the kind of signature thing that it does that it gives you that, I don't know, that, that creative look? That, that feel? Um, I think it's the ability for me to light the cave in the way I see it when I'm normally diving. So caves are dark. Yep. They're very dark. And when we're not there, we as divers, we bring light into them. That's what we see. But there's shadows and darkness everywhere. And really when you're cave diving, the way yeah. I like cave dive, you're almost keeping your light forward most of the time and you're looking at that soft spill to the edges and the darkness coming around on you. And that's what makes cave diving such an intimate and fascinating experience. Yeah. So um, when you have a camera that requires huge amounts of light to be able to record a usable image, then you can't portray that experience anymore. So the ability for me to light a camera, a uh, cave, in a way that is similar to how I would normally see it when I'm diving and keep that sense of mystery. It allows me to show you how I see a cave normally instead of spreading huge amounts of lights everywhere and lighting it up like really, really think, strong, which I used to do. I, I think this is a common mistake that people, or, or mistake, a common creative thing that people do in caves is they try to light the whole cave up. They try to make the light daylight. And in truth, caves are not, caves are dark places. And, you know, I think that's a really, really important creative thing is, you know, let's celebrate the darkness. Let's let's show that caves are dark and light up, you know, provide a spotlight into the bits of it that, that we want to illustrate. I, yeah, I think that's a, that's a really strong creative decision. I think it's, um, yeah, great. So, uh, what sort of ISOs do you get this camera to work at then, Natalie? <laughs> um, I have been shooting uh, uh, between 12,800 and 20,000 um, IS, uh, ISOs. I, uh, I had like a huge kind of panic breakdown at one point when I was watching the, the beautiful ad that Sony made for this camera when they premiered it. And like they're just going. Twenty thousand ISO, one hundred and twenty frames per second in the dark, and it's perfectly clear. And I'm like, you are speaking my language, people. This is what I do. Um, so of course, the very first thing I did. I, I mean, I haven't even attempted to shoot it at a uh, low ISO. Low ISOs yet. I mean, the lowest I tried was twelve thousand eight hundred because I don't care. I want to use the high, high ones. It's what's uh, the video I shot at 20,000 is still pretty, pretty clean. It's a little noisier, but you can, you can really bump it up there. So um, so that's of, one of the things. We've got a bit of a clip of this. So we've got a bit of a clip of Natalie's video here. So, so the start of the video along the line, Natalie, what, what ISO is this at roughly? Oh, exactly. I guess. Um, all right. So I've been shooting between 12,800 and 20,000 ISOs, um, and it's it's clean. <laughs> so, so in the video, I think you mentioned you switched ISOs as you went along? Oh, yeah. Okay, so for the video clip that um, I sent to you, yeah. I, uh, I shot a variety of ISOs. Mainly the whole thing is at 16,000, um, but I was starting to lose light and had to set my lights down a little bit by the end of the shoot. Um, so then I bumped the ISO to 20. Um, none of my lights are on full or anything like that. I think the Kelvin is on like third power and the black mollies are on like low. Um, <laughs> and I can still do it. Yeah, it's amazing. And, and so, okay, so, so we've got this amazing ISO performance. What about things like autofocus? I mean, you know, the kind of environments you're diving is, is really challenging for autofocus. So, so how are you dealing with that and how are you finding it? The autofocus is a significant improvement um, from the uh, A7S1's autofocus, obviously. It's a thing that Sony does. 
Um, yeah. I will be getting a focus ring. They were just out of stock when I picked up the camera, so I haven't tried to manually focus yet. Can't yet. Um, I am expecting to use manual focus sometimes. I think for moving shots, I'll probably use autofocus. I would say that it focuses properly on a distant model in a tiny cave like 90% of the time, which is okay. pretty impressive. Yeah, it's um, so the autofocus is extremely good. Um, anybody who's familiar with the camera, um, you can focus track on land by fixing like pointing at the person like touching the touch screen it'll lock on um obviously that ability underwater so and i would sony please let me do it with the, with the little toggle on the back of the frame would be amazing you can't you can't as far as i know you can't be able to find a way to lock on a focus you can choose the focus point they have a joystick on the back which is incredible works really well, but then once the person starts moving for video, I haven't been able to lock it on. I might, I might be missing something here. Well, that, um, that would be, be an interesting it's point. It's not yeah. right, so it would be doable. Um, if, I'm, if I'm wrong, I might just not know. Um, yeah. But it is doing a really good job of tracking the movie person, and you've all these options to say where you want to focus. So if I know the person's going to be just across the middle, I can choose like middle focus area before I start. And it's, it's highly effective. A uh, thing I haven't tried for divers yet, which I'm going to try, is you can, if anybody's looked at this, Sony will autofocus on the person's eyes, right? Um, so you can choose left eye first, right eye second. Like, it'll literally focus on the people of their eyes when they turn their head, and, like, focus yeah. from one to the other, and that's it. So um, clearly, in a cave, this isn't going to work as well if I'm really far away from the model. I did get it to autofocus on Rory's eyes in the close a close shot through a mask. Um, so the next thing I'm going to try with autofocus is you can set it to focus on animals yeah. as opposed to humans. And I'm wondering if the mask shape will read as eyes of an animal and improve it a bit. I, I, so it's going to be... I think it might I think it's the actual human eye focus might work through a mask as long as the mask is at an angle that's not reflecting the light. Um, but well, it's a big right when the dive moves, yeah. it, it passes, and it's, I'm really far away from him in some of these shots. Yeah. So I, I don't, it, it's not the, it's focusing him, but I think I'm going to try the animal eye one. Uh, but I would say like 90% of the time, the focus in the moving shots is spot on through the entire the entire shot. So I mean, you can't complain too much about no, that. And amazing, underwater it's pretty amazing, um, and I'm looking forward to starting to play with manual focus when I get my focus ring. Cool. And so that sort of brings us neatly onto optics. So, 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 which lens are you using it with, Natalie? So I am using I believe it's called the stock lens, um, a twenty-eight seventy, uh, just the Sony normal lens, um, which is like not a super fancy, expensive lens, but uh, what the lens really is. It's this WACP port, um, which is, is uh, created by Naughty Cam, and this is what is leading to the hyper sharp edges and um, sort of perfect perfect corners of these shots, which is just wild. Like I knew it was going to make a difference, but to shoot this and see the difference is insane. Like the corners of the photos are razor sharp. I used to just give up because I knew I had a shitty lens on my old camera, so I just vignetted everything so you couldn't see it. But like, I haven't touched the vignette in photos in Lightroom since I first shot this camera because I don't have to anymore, and it's just Good. beautiful. So what, what sort of apertures are you shooting it at, Natalie? Okay, so this is wild as well um, because I started at uh, 8, Right. And, uh, and I just started dropping it, dropping it, and now I'm just leaving it on four the whole time, which is a better is a much better effect in the cave actually because with the pour everything is still pretty sharp at four, but it gives you more of a three dimensional sense than the eight does. The eight aperture eight is a bit flatter, and the four, especially in video, is looking hyper three dimensional while not losing too much of the sharpness. 
yeah, I mean, you're getting you're getting much more depth of field effect by shooting an f4, which you know by by fading mm -hmm. that background out, you will get yeah yeah yeah. So so added benefit, isn't it? Really, yeah yeah. Uh, it's yeah. insane. So you have like sharpness across the board, but also through dimensionality, and so this is exactly what you want for video, unless you're trying to purposefully like focus polar or something. It's it's insane what a huge difference this makes in the video quality. I, th I think it would be really cool. I mean, an experiment for the future would be to try the WACP2 um, with, with the setup. Um, because obviously what you have got with WACP1 is you've still got a bit of barrel distortion. So there still is a bit of curve. It would be really interesting. I, I guess the only problem is we'd need a small army of Sherpas to get it to and from the Cenote and then because it's a heavy beast. But but I think it could be really, really good in, in, in caves. Really, really good. Um, yeah, I'm fairly strong. I can, I can suffer for a bit if I need to. I, I, I will suffer for a bit. But I, I, I keep getting now, um, I'm posting online, everybody's like, what lens are you using? Amazing. I need this camera, this lens. I'm like, stock lens, guys. It's not the it's not the lens I have the camera. Sony makes really amazing lenses. I have their like super most basic possible lens, basically, for this camera. And I have the WACP port, which is basically a $4,000 additional lens. And that's why it works. Um, I think the other thing to bring up, of course, for people is uh, you're not doing over-unders with the WACP port. And you are uh, not going to be able to shoot on land. It's a water optic, so you put it underwater and it focuses. It will not focus up here with this on, right? So, so the other thing I guess that that the the A seven S three's brought is it is you've got some new um, video resolutions and frame rates and stuff. So, um, have you been shooting in four K? What's what's the what what do you feel about four K or HD or what what what's what's working with that? Four K, four K is amazing. I shot four K the first day. I edited four K. I thought I'm not doing this anymore since my my stuff primarily goes online for the moment. And then I shot one day of HD, and I was like, you know, <laughs> I'm going to shoot for a case from now on. I just need to hear about what shots I say. So the workflow is miserable um, with 4K. It's, but I, I mean, the, the camera has two SD, or sorry, it's got two, two card slots. So um, I estimate I can shoot about 100 minutes of 4K of its reading. So it's not going to be a problem like on a day of shooting, I don't think, because yeah. if you get a shot you don't like, you should immediately delete it underwater because otherwise you're going to have misery in the afternoon. Yeah. Um, so 4K is amazing. It's beautiful. It's like there's no point in shooting anything besides 4K anymore because I, I care about what the thing looks like. Mm -hmm. um, the fallout is the data management. I'm on my second. I've had it for eight shoots, and I'm on my second two terabytes solid state external hard drive. So this is going to become an issue really quickly. And then, of course, um, workflow. So, I mean, I, I edit all my own stuff and things. So the editing is crazy um, if you're trying to directly edit 4K. Obviously, um, with most programs, you can work with proxies. So it took me a while. Um, proxies are not intuitive. You can, like, try to figure it out on your own and then it doesn't work. Uh, so you actually have to... You actually have to, you know, watch some YouTube videos and learn yeah, how to use really the tool. Cool. Yeah, yeah you, you actually have to follow the directions. I'm not a direction reader, but I have read it finally a few hours reading the directions. And our proxies work beautifully. Um, I would say I'm having to develop still my own process because I do stabilize all my shots because they're underwater shots. So proxies work until you stabilize them. Yeah. And then it goes back to the original footage. So if you're going to try to edit this, this is an issue because you can't edit the stabilized proxies anymore, but you have to stabilize things to see how the stabilization is going to look before you decide if you can use the shot. So uh, my workflow now, I think I have something we'll see because I have only done it to like the one minute video and I don't have a 4K monitor here. Um, so I'll have to see how it works, but... So I do like the initial color grading to get it really close and then um, do like a really rough cut of just the individual clip I'm using. So I get the junk out because you know, 
a second of junk because, you know, like, Alex, you had a big event. <laughs> and yeah, and right. then uh, I stabilized it. So now I'm back to the original. And now I'm editing 4K again. Then I export it at 4K as an edited file and go to my, like, halfway done shots folder on hard drive number two. And then now that it's stabilized and it's finished, it's in its own new 4K file. Now I can create a proxy again when it's time to edit it. Yeah, yeah. So then I'm going to edit, like, the, when I go to piece this video project I'm working on together, when I edit it, I'm going to edit the already, I'm going to create the proxies out of the already stabilized images, and I think that's my workaround. It's a, it, I mean, it sounds like not much sleep. That's the that's the. <laughs> I uh, I got I took a seven minute. I'm an idiot, so I did swimming out shot that actually came out looking really good. And I I want to play with the slow motion and speed ramp. And I was like, oh, we can speed ramp this. And then I was like, okay, so we stabilize it. So I like put a video on the background so my computer wouldn't go to sleep. And then I hit stabilize, and then I went to bed, and I woke up in the morning, and it was at ninety five percent. Oh, so yeah, it's all right. It's a good use of That's time. Um, but I mean, if anybody wants to buy me a supercomputer, I'm down. Until then, I'm going to work on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah. The next trick. Another bigger computer. Oh well. Um, Natalie, thank you so much. That's been great. Uh, if I may, we'll return and definitely, obviously, it's early days somewhat with this camera and, and stuff for the moment. Um, and, you know, and we'd really like to come back and chat to you again um, in the future when you've got a few more ideas, if that's all right. Um, Absolutely. But just to stress again, you know, um, if you're planning a trip to Mexico to dive in the Cenotes and Caves, um, go on to underthejungle.com um, and um, you know, they've got a team of really experienced guys who I, I should point out that uh, Natalie's business partner, exploration partner, Vincent, is, is an awesome model, too. So so you can team up with him and he, he can hover motionless above line for hours. He gets a bit bored looking, but apart from that, he's very good at it. Um, but um, but yeah. Um, so, yeah, please head on over to underthejungle.com um, and check it out. Thank you again, Natalie. Um, Thank you so much. We'll see you again soon. Um, and thanks again to Naughty Cam to sponsor this episode. Um, obviously, much appreciated. We can't make these episodes without their support. Um, I'd like to thank you all for watching. Please feel free to, to sponsor Natalie a supercomputer in the comment section um, and drop us a like if you enjoyed it. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you again soon.